which is actually mm -hmm. like uh, the developmental education portion, the any portion, and college algebra. So they'll get credit for both, and they'll eliminate the developmental ed and the college algebra in one semester. As a, as a kind of general overview, um, the college as a whole, when, when we did the QEP, has now embraced this model <clears throat> because now they're doing accelerated options for developmental reading and writing. They have, they have a combined course. Oh my gosh. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, and so, uh, so, the, so another thing that we incorporate is, is NCBOs, non course based remediation, non course based options. So, um, one option that they are experimenting with in the reading and writing is directed self placement. Students who feel as though that they're ready for, you know, the lowest level, they can go into that on their own without needing a placement score. Uh, math 200, you know, whatever they feel they're ready for, they can try. Again, most of those have been grant projects, but uh, we're definitely working on experimenting with all of these options because, again, we don't want to have available options for those students. Again, if they need the, the traditional sequence, they can go through it. If they only need a one core sequence, uh, and like Dr. Oviedo mentioned, uh, the new math based project from the Data Center in Austin is primarily looking at these pathways, which uh, is becoming a, a predominant theme across the nation in terms of mathematics education. Uh, the pathways model, it looks at uh, the major of the student, uh, where liberal arts uh, majors may not need college algebra, they may not need an algebra based uh, curriculum, so they may need contemporary mathematics or math for liberal arts. Students following a pathway of uh, social sciences. Uh, may not need college algebra. They may benefit more from uh, statistics, and of course, business majors uh, could could benefit from either business statistics or business algebra. So algebra would become more of a science-specific preparation course, which, it, in all intents and purposes, it is a preparation for calculus-based instruction. So uh, we're trying to get people in the right classes to accelerate their actual experience with the math course. One question: Because obviously, the courses you developed. Yeah. So, so how does that affect the fact of workload and then schedule? Um, the, well, for starters, the LHEs have, uh, have changed. The calculations have changed. So, for example, they have a maximum to teach you uh, five classes. Anything over that is uh, overload. Um, which is fine because a lot of them are very comfortable that the, uh, the class time is either 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., or 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a three-hour course, but at the same time that the instructors are doing that, they can put their uh, five-minute break, ten-minute break in the class whenever they please. Some instructors just go in and talk to their exam. But say they're giving an exam that day in a module, they go in and talk to the exam and they're done for the day. So it can be a one-hour exam and they're done. So it's up to the instructor how they want to do it, but it's a two-hour three uh, three session. It, also, it hasn't affected the, the number of faculty needed. The, the, the number of faculty needed was exactly the same. The faculty that were on board in 2009, the number of faculty positions are exactly the same. I mean, we've increased maybe three positions in that time, and that's just due to, to population growth of the college as a whole. Um, there was, you know, we had a, a unique situation this last fall semester, but that was, I think, due to the neighboring university going through a major transition, and so we got an influx of students coming to us but uh, the number of faculty that we have assigned to developmental math has not changed, you know, according to, to just this, this project. It's changed based on population growth of the overall college. Look at the exams and then say, What's this? Get up and walk out. So there's 
present a proper reading and not a computer. So the students would kind of get up and walk out of class. So that's when our success rate was low. What we did was um, we went ahead and advanced students into Mac 1332. was uh, students that were ready to go into that section, we showed that uh, they were college ready. Instead of them going from uh, Mac 100 to Mac 200, they were going into Mac 1332, which meant that they were already college ready for that faculty side. So and just to piggyback on your question. So you know we have the 120 hour degree limit. Yes. So how did this impact the the six hour course? How did that impact? I mean, did you make that part of the well, goal or for the student it, it comes in four hours? Yes. Oh it's six contact hours. Yeah. Or oh I see. The limits, well that's a good the of the structure is by religious. Four of the cheese collection five at a one point one one for that. Thank you. You're on good version. Anybody? Yes, sir. Okay, first time. I'm here. 14, 14 success rate, that's yours. Okay, yes, I'm totally there. Let me see here. Let me find the slide. The success rates um, I have here. Uh, when you've shown some 5% higher increase in 1414, 14, um, it has shown significant difference. Uh, again, there's been lots, lots of uh, evidence that, that the QEP model is is making a difference because again, students are not staying in in, in the developmental course sequence for such a long time, and the concentrated uh, instruction is helping. Uh, so we, that's why that's why they pretty much like like Mr. Sepa mentioned, they are now eradicating the, the three core sequence. It's no longer going to be an option for students. It's only going to be a two core sequence option, <clears throat> and even a one core sequence option because is showing so much success. And uh, I know you had mentioned that, or asked about um, most cu more current data. The data that I have is showing uh, an increase while the average of the three course <clears throat> uh, success rates were about 65%. The uh, two course sequence is hovering closer to 70% for the, the last uh, two years, 2014 to 2015. So uh, about a 5% increase in success for those, those courses as well as for the college algebra you know, as well.
but again, you can see the significant change from near 4,500 students in developmental math down to about 1,500, uh, so it had a significant impact. I'm just curious, did you all, uh, have you done anything in terms of the feeder system high schools and showing the administrators and or instructors, department chairs, this information? Because you know, there, it's that you're taking what's coming to you and you're having to solve a problem that could be solved prior to you, they're getting to you, right? I mean, have you, I, I know that QEP is about Within institution, but in terms of having a, a wider spread impact, have you thought about, has your campus thought about what you could do in that regard? You know, making them aware that you, there's a way you can bring people up before they get to you. There has been discussion, of course, you know, um, I think, I think our, our our solution to that, or, or the, the reaction from the high schools, have been to uh, to try and get students college ready sooner. So their efforts are on growing our dual enrollment program. Our dual enrollment program is enormous. Uh, I, I, didn't, I couldn't quite hear it at the beginning, but uh, of our 34,000 plus students, we have about 14,000 of them as dual enrollment students. We have partnerships with over 23 high school, I mean, uh, uh, school districts, and over 75 high schools. And so their focus is doing all of the necessary prep work to get students college ready. And again, the, the methodology of doing that is that TSI assessment that the state has. And so if, if a student can, can uh, become ready and, get, and go over the materials in that TSI exam and get placed into college readiness standards, then they're eligible to take college classes at the high school level. And therefore, when they come to us, if they come to us, <clears throat> then, uh, then they're college ready. And they're already you know, ready for mathematics and they're ready for higher level courses. Um, you know, again, it's had an adverse effect because we're getting so many students college ready and, and we're giving them so many dual credit uh, courses. There's, there's almost a thousand students in dual enrollment graduating each year uh, that, that they're somewhat bypassing us. Wow. And so that's kind of, again, a strange phenomenon, but again, you know, it, it's a win-win a situation. And so our focus is now on those dual enrollment students who take some college credit but don't complete an associate's degree because again, we have a large number of students completing their associate's degree. Um, via a bunch of different models. We have 23, no, I'm sorry, 25 early college high schools. So those students complete an associate's with it before they even graduate high school. We have academy models focused on engineering, uh, health sciences, and criminal justice. Though they also graduate with an associate's degree before they, they finish high school. And so we're having that, that um, to react to more high school students with getting college degrees before they even finish high school and not needing to take our courses. But again, you know, it is a partnership Another thing that's happening in the state is the state uh, came out with a new um, legislative bill called House Bill 5, which is a, again, a college placement exam that's being, or I guess it's a course, not an exam. It's a course that students can take who are kind of the bubble students in high school, uh, that high schools are now are being uh, expected to, to offer to students that they're interested in becoming college ready and they can't pass the assessment, then this college placement course is the option for them. And uh, right now it's in its first kind of year of implementation, so only a small handful of uh, high schools are implementing it, but the, the legislation states that it's a mandatory requirement for all high schools to do within the next few years.
But I mean, it's good. It's again <clears throat> success I think all around the board um, students are, are completing faster they're having more success in the subsequent courses <clears throat> there's been no no significant impact on the number of faculty needed or the, their, their course load um, there's been um, <clears throat> again no compromise in terms of the curriculum and, and, and you know what, what we're offering in terms of course content and integrity of that content in fact, I think faculty feel more comfortable with it because of the, of the uh, change in classroom environment and they're able to keep students in one classroom at one time and use computers when they need them, when they don't need them. Uh, tutoring support has been you know, tremendous in, in that aspect. Advising has been uh, tremendous. Again, the marketing of, of the program uh, has been overwhelming. Uh, and again, getting support from external constituents as well as internally has been great. And I think the data that you saw was, was uh, evidence of that. Uh, and so. Again, the other evidence is that we're no longer offering the three core sequence. We're only offering two core sequence and, and uh, accelerated sequences like New Math Phase Project, which is a one course uh, accelerated model.